Ken, we'll start with the Fed because we just talked about this idea that there has been a big about face in some of the rhetoric coming from the Fed. Is it now a situation where investors don't have to fear the Fed anymore? I don't know about any more. I think the Fed is kind of off the table, certainly through the summer. You would think that they're not going to change the stance that they just changed. I don't expect the Fed minutes to say anything earth shattering today because this is going to be the minutes of the meeting where they kind of got the message that the market wasn't happy. We could all debate whether that's a good thing, whether the Fed's following the idea of keeping the market happy, but that's the situation we're in. When we talk about terms like balance sheet runoff, is that, you th in your mind, the most important thing that we have to talk about with regard to the Fed in this current market environment? I don't know if it's the most important, but is the one that's out there to talk about because they've taken interest rates off the table. So I think the balance sheet runoff will continue, but it's certainly not going to grab the headlines because it's not like an event that, that's a number and there it is. Um, I mean, they're managing getting out of 10 years of emergency numbers, and, and, and we're really not in an emergency anymore. So it's always been anticipated it would be somewhat painful getting out of it. I give them credit for doing as well, as good a job as they've done up to this point. But at some point, they are going to have to continue to, to normalize, as they say. In your mind, has the softening in tone from the Federal Reserve and, Cha and Chair Jay Powell, has it been one of the primary driving forces behind the sharp rise that we've seen in stocks ever since those December 24th lows. It's hard to argue that that wouldn't be the case. I mean, it was like literally knee-jerk knee reaction. While he was on TV saying it, the market was up like 200 points within 90 seconds. I think that the, the, the bigger issue, though, is that, you know, the higher interest rates spooked the market. Right now, investors are hostage still to equities because you're not going to get any real rate of return after inflation in fixed income. Even though the Fed's been raising, the, the bond market hasn't been cooperating. So I, it keeps it as an equity story for a while. Ken, we've seen a massive run for stocks ever since those Christmas Eve lows. Many will argue that it was an overshoot to the downside. People got way too pessimistic yeah. and that now this is a way too optimistic view of the upside right now. In your mind, do we have a constructive market for people to still put money in at current levels or are we due for a bit of a pause or a retest of those lows? I, I I'm of the mind that it's always a good idea to be investing, especially if you get a dollar cost average in. You have to keep in mind, December was the worst December since 1931, and January was the best January since 1987. Markets have a way of, you know, overswinging. Pendulums do that. So if you're going to look at Jan as the current market as being too high, maybe it's that December got really too low. So we're getting back to that middle zone. But I think the economy still remains strong. Uh, the consumer... Although there's been some question whether consumer range strong and, and Walmart's numbers yesterday kind of hint that there's more strength that maybe is not being reflected in some other numbers. I think the consumer is still optimistic, uh, strong, the economy strong, and we're getting earnings growth. Maybe it's not as much as we thought going into the year, but if we still get five to eight to maybe even nine percent earnings growth, that's great. Last year at 20 some odd percent was the aberration. All right. So you're constructive. Ken Kamen, thank you very much. Thank you.